This is Vlad, and welcome to lesson 9 of this course. In this course, we'll go over the shape rules. The first tool uh, we're going to present is called Rectangle Tool. As it seems obvious, those rectangles and squares, if you press Shift, the constraint proportion. We can also enable advanced options by double clicking. Sometimes double clicking doesn't work, but you can also check if uh, a tool you want has an advanced option by pressing Alt and clicking on the artboard. This is the safest way to check it out. We can choose the width, height, and if you want to constrain width and proportions. In order to illustrate this button better, I will press, let's say, uh, 100 and 200, and I'll press the button. Now, if I change this to 200, the ratio will be preserved, which is 1 to 2. And there we go. We got our shape. The next one is called the rounded rectangle tool. Pretty similar. We can draw the rectangles. We can again double click, but doesn't work. So just uh, Alt or Option and click on the artboard. And you can choose the width and height, the previous option, and you can choose the corner radius. Now, I wouldn't recommend using the tool, this tool, like ever, because it's a destructive workflow and you cannot change the rounded rectangle. I mean, this can I change it later. There are better ways to do this. The next tool I will draw is called the ellipse tool. This can draw ellipses or circles. And if you walk, you can see the cursor changes. You click, you can determine the width and height. The options are the same. This tool is pretty simple, so we'll move on. The next one is called the polygonal tool. We can draw polygons. Let's click again and we can choose the number of sides. So let's say 12. So we got the polygon with 12 sides. Again, this is not very complicated. So we'll move to the star tool. We can draw stars. We can choose the number of points and the inner and outer radius. This is the outer radius. And this is the inner radius with the inner points. So if you choose date, you can go. Now this uh, option, this tool has a number of options you can use. Sorry for that. Now click somewhere, hold, but don't release, and use the arrow keys to increase or decrease the number of points. Pretty obvious, so this is one way to interactively use this tool. One other thing, you can press Ctrl and move them inside or outside. If you are a Mac, you can use Command. As you can see, this is very interesting. So this is a very complete shape to the basic style you get just by using the draw tool. Now, the last one uh, is not really a Shape tool, but it's included here, so I'll just go over it fast. This is a flare tool, and it can be used to draw flares like this. Let's clean again so I can show you again. So, first click, hold, click, hold, and drag, and determines the size of the first uh, coil. The second link determines the reflection. Usually those lenses are pretty ugly. Now, if you uh, ever played with After Effects before, which I think you do not, but just in case, uh, they have a similar tool. It does about the same, the one in Illustrator. Of course, can be animated, but it's just as ugly. 
Now, if you want, uh, in After Effects, uh, some professional lens flares, which uh, many people uh, don't know about it, but you can use different programs, even if they are made for motion graphics, uh, compositing like After Effects or Nuke, to explore graphics in After Effects and improve your designs. And now coming back to the lens flares, two good packages third party made are the one called Retinol from Crapco, the giant. Actually, sorry, just the giant because that's another company. But uh, that's a good one. But personally, I like the one from Video Copilot, that net more. They look more cool. And uh, if you ever want to play with them, just go over the website and maybe buy them. But that's a different story. Let's come back to our Illustrator course. Let's double click. And this time it works fine. You can choose the diameter. You can choose the opacity and the brightness. You can choose how many rays, which are those lines you want. What's the longest? The fastness determines the distance between them. Then you have the halo, which is those ones. Again, the fuzziness, how much uh, blur it has, you can see here. Then you can uh, choose the rings, like this, how many rings, the number you want, what is the largest, is it in percent of uh, the total size, the path, how distant it is, and the direction. Like this, see? Everything is interactive. So if you turn down the opacity, you can make it more dark or light, you can turn the brightness, you can decrease the number of rays, like this. Again, you can make them shorter or longer. Again, same for the hello, bigger or smaller. Fuzziness, and you get the idea. You can also increase the number of uh, small circles, and that's the idea with the lens flare tools. It's not very useful because it's pretty ugly, but if you may find it useful in some work, good for you. Okay, that's it for this lesson, and see you next time.